First lesson today comes from Isaiah 55. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall not call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. We will read Psalm 145 responsibly. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is with all, and his compassion is over all that he is angry. The Lord upholds all who are fallen, and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways, and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, and all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of all who fear him. He also hears their cry for sin. The Lord watches over all who love him. But all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. The second lesson is from Romans 9. I am speaking 
the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and in ease and ceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accused and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to my flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promise, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, come the Messiah, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. Here ends the second reading. <laughs> John, 
a Karabi and his wife was an evil woman who did not like John because she was afraid of his power because he was the one who was going to. No, he wasn't. He was the forerunner, the precursor to Jesus. But what we have is really a contrast of two stories. Because in the reading, right, the scripture right before, we have Herod having this beautifully banquet, lavish and grand, hellacious, and more wine and liquor than probably needed to be. Well, Herodian being kind of the woman that she was, said to her daughter, because this was all this party was being given because of Herod's daughter's birthday. So Herodian sends in Herod's daughter to dance for her father, for the king. Now I don't know. There's something not right in that picture. That you're sending your daughter in to dance in front of all the men who have way too much as well. And he asks her, well, what do you want? You know, this is, the well, what do you want for your birthday? Do you want a pony? Do you want a crown? Do you want a new death and sweet? Well, his daughter doesn't exactly know, so she goes back to talk to Herodian to her mom and asks her, what should she ask for? And Herodian being the woman she was, said, well, I want the head of John the Baptist on a silver platter. The daughter goes back and asks for dad, asks Herod, and of course Herod, not wanting to disappoint, maybe, the crowd, says, okay, and sends off the Stewards to behead John and bring back the head of John on that silver platter for his daughter's birthday. The lavishness of that event tells us something. Jesus has now heard about the beheading and the death of his cousin and is saddened by it. And besides, he needs time alone. I think I understand that for this week. I really wanted to quit answering the phone. I wanted to quit reading emails that were coming in and text messages. I wanted to stop and not have any more news. I wanted to pull away, and Jesus did, and found that moment went out in a boat. That was his place to go. It wasn't long, though, before the people heard about it and all came and were surrounding the shores. And I'm sure Jesus either had two reactions. It was either, oh, really? Do I have to go on top of these people again? Or was he saying, yes, God, yes, Father, I will do as you have asked me to do. See, the death of John is really the propelling of Jesus to Calvary. It is the moment that his ministry now becomes significant. And he is now being propelled to start the journey Calvary for you and me. This is the beginning of that. And so Jesus comes on shore. And we know that he was filled with compassion and wanted to hear what was going on. And he did the healings and he did the teaching. He probably preached some while he was doing that. The Greek word for compassion, we kind of think about it being a heart thing, that if, if we feel good, 
going to do because we have compassion. The grief for compassion is about to the depths of your gut. It is to the very depths of our guts that we pull that emotion from. See, our gut is really where our reaction is the deepest. The compassion Jesus had that day was from his very gut. It was that that feeling of knowing that the people were hurting, that they needed to be healed that day. Five thousand men at least gathered. There were probably five thousand women at least, and probably at least 5,000 children, and probably more. And I find it ironic way that as they're going through this time and through the event of the day, Jesus is at them all sit down and, you know, and they're, they're on the grass, and, you know, but the disciples, Oh, darn disciples. Apparently I haven't figured it out yet. I'm like, oh, Jesus, you need to send them into town. You need to get them away. Send them away because we don't have anything to feed them with. And they've got to be hungry. But send them away because we don't want to do anything with this. Now nah, that's too much trouble. I don't want to deal with it, Jesus. Come on, just be a bud. Can't you see him? Isn't it kind of like we do sometimes? Just it's kind of what I wanted to do part of this week at one point. Just get away, everyone. And it, it, it was okay. Because God kept saying in my gut, no, child, I have where I need you. It's okay. I'm carrying you through this. I'm carrying you. You're going to be okay. Jesus says no. So he gathers, has the disciples go and gather the bread and the fish. He says, bring it to me. Bring it to me. And let me lift it to this God of creation who already created everything for us and asks for a blessing gives a blessing. It's kind of a eulogy. Eucharist, eulogy, all comes out of the same root again in Greek. It's out of that same, that same kind of root. That's to give thanks and to speak a word of blessing. And he lifts it and he says, Father, I have much here. I have much. Jesus turns after he asks for that blessing and he broke the bread, the gift of the earth and he turns to us, to you and me and says, you now you there is no mincing words this is not a call to say we're going to stop and be silent it is a call of you disciples and children of God are going to go forth and give. And you will feed. Now, I don't know about you, but the disciples had to have been totally puzzled because he breaks that bread into 12 pieces and hands them each piece. And you know what's funny is the fish kind of don't get mentioned in the beginning. They're there, I guess. I don't know what happened to the fish. That's one of those I don't know. I couldn't find out what happened. The bread is broke. And as the disciples are walking along, can you imagine they break off a piece and yet it just it just kept giving. The 12 loaves of bread. I mean the, the, the loaves of bread fed 20,000 people. And not just a little 
bit, but they were satisfied. They were content. In fact, my guess is the kids were running up and wanting more because they wanted another sandwich. They wanted and were given all that they needed. And I think for you and me, maybe, the lesson comes down that Jesus says, you will be my servants and you will go and do. I was at the food pantry Thursday and I love listening to the little workers. You know, Pastor Cindy, we have so much. Do you think we should like give people more? I'm like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. But and you and you see them and and, and the offering money just keeps coming in. We have so much. I said, yeah. We are to use it to feed and care for all of the children that come to us. There are some stories that, of course, you hear that wrench my heart about what people are, are journeying through where their life is taking them. And so for some, it's just a moment in time. It's okay because they know they're going to get back on track. And then there are those who don't know. See, what God does in this reading for us is said that it makes no difference how much we give. It can be five dollars, it can be a thousand dollars. It can be one little gift, or it can be many bags of gifts. Each of those are worth as much to God as the other one. Because God will take and bless those gifts and enlarge them into the community over and over. And I keep telling the, the, the board that it is what is happening. I keep saying, guys, it's because people are wanting to give because they've been given much. But it's not about us making it much. It's about God extending and using those blessings even larger. So it makes no difference. In the next few weeks as we gather school supplies, everyone brought a ruler. That's a lot of rulers. Everyone brings a box of crayons. It's a lot. It makes no difference because God blesses and enlarges those gifts and uses them in his glory. Just remember, Herod was lavish and very selfish. Jesus had loaves and fishes, very humble. Which one's kingdom is larger? Jesus. Because he empowered and equipped the disciples that you will. It's not that just leaders of congregation do. It is that we all share in that glory and in that blessing that he has given to you and me. See, all Jesus wants, and it struck me today, all Jesus wants is for us to bring to him the gifts, our sorrows, our concerns, our prayers. So I was feeling a little sorry for myself. And I had to say, nope, God, this is yours. I don't know. I don't know what to do. We can't even do part of these 
Cowboys and Eagles. The two in Arizona can't even do. And for Becky, in the last month, she lost her mom and her dad. But she can't even do a funeral yet. For a pastor in Arizona in Tucson, can't do a funeral. For my friend's mother in Kansas City, they can't do a funeral. We did have a funeral in, in Omaha. We were able to give arms. And yet, what I had to do was just say, okay, God. If my roots of faith are deep, as trees' roots are, you're holding the whole thing. You're going to bless all of this and use it for your glory. Well, that's what I'm seeing happen for Becky in Arizona. Her church did a drive-by yesterday. Cards and balloons so that little Ellie, the granddaughter, could know that the church and the people still love them, even though they can't have her. For my friend in Kansas City, the church stepped up and has managed to do some things until the time comes that they can gather. The disciples among us, that we each are, are being called and blessed this day to do, to go. That's why I love Jesus' words. And the, and the disciples are like, well, oh, you know, we only have a little bit. But, you know, Jesus replied, they don't need to go away. You are going to give them something to eat. There was one one lent way back. And at the church that we were attending when the kids were little, I'll never forget, we were running out of soup. We literally were running out of soup that day. That evening, more people had come than what we had ever planned on. And everyone looked, and I don't know why they didn't even meet. And they said, what are we going to do? And I said, I don't know. Maybe have more water. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> I wasn't even a pastor yet. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I said, can we add some things together? Can we make something more? And we did. And you know what? We had excess. And so we laughed and we got to the rebate of five fish, or five loaves and two fish that next to that in that cycle. And said, see, God provides when we let him have it. When we want to control it, it's gonna happen. God's peace be this day that you go and do. Amen. We will sing him number 235.
everlasting one. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Okay, but if you 